56 from the US, US uh, from North Carolina originally, so I live in Hawaii now. My initial goal was to come and fight. I think, you know, everybody around the globe should be motivated to come here. It seems asinine that we have a, a leader in a country that does not understand the concept of, of being unselfish and being generous. Shocking footage of Donald Trump's shooter and would-be assassin has come to light after his arrest. It has happened again. The U.S. Secret Service says there has been another attempt to assassinate former President Donald Trump. And we need thousands from, from all of them. If, if, if the governments will not send their official military, then we civilians have to pick up the torch and make this thing happen. In whatever country you live in it is unacceptable. As human beings, we must support each other. We cannot turn our backs on anyone around the world and expect the problem to go away. Donald Trump was at his golf club in West Palm Beach, Florida, when what the FBI called an attempted assassination unfolded on Sunday. This marks the second time in just nine weeks that the Republican presidential nominee has faced such danger. The first time was this. <laughs> Thankfully, Trump is safe and sound, and authorities have a man in custody. Here's how it went down. Secret Service agents were stationed a few holes ahead of where Trump was playing when they spotted the muzzle of an AK-style rifle poking out from the bushes, about 400 yards away. Quick to act, one agent fired at the suspect who promptly dropped the gun and sped off in an SUV, leaving behind two backpacks, a scope, and a GoPro. According to Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw, the man was caught shortly after by law enforcement in a neighboring county. Some are speculating that it may have been an inside job. Holy smokes, was this an inside job? No one knew Trump was playing golf today. It wasn't on his public schedule. What's your thoughts? I think Trump should clean house. Also, when he's elected, he should clean out the FBI, CIA, and Secret Service. Protect President Trump. In classic Trump fashion, he reassured supporters via email. There were gunshots near me, but let's not let the rumor mill go wild. I'm safe and well. He added, nothing's slowing me down. I will never surrender. Afterward, Trump headed back to Mar-a-Lago, his home base in Palm Beach. No word yet on how this incident might affect his schedule or campaign plans. Trump was supposed to speak about cryptocurrency live on X on Monday night, with more campaign stops lined up in Michigan and New York in the days ahead. What does this mean for former President Donald Trump moving forward as he continues to campaign as we head into November? Well, there's no indication this is going to change the campaign schedule. We don't know anything as far as that's concerned. An internal email sent to Trump campaign staffers urged everyone to stay vigilant as they approach the final 50 days of the campaign. We can only save America by working together, it read. Both President Biden and Vice President Harris condemned the violence. Harris expressed being deeply disturbed and emphasized that this should not lead to more chaos, while Biden assured that the Secret Service would have all the resources they need to keep Trump safe. In the aftermath, Trump touched base with some of his closest allies, including Ohio Sen J.D. Vance, South Carolina Sen, Lindsey Graham and a few Fox News hosts. House Speaker Mike Johnson spent hours with Trump, calling him unstoppable. Fox News Sean Hannity shared details from a conversation he had with Trump's golf buddy, Steve Whitkoff. According to Whitkoff, they were on the fifth hole, about to putt, when they heard pop, 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 pop. Within seconds, Secret Service agents swooped in, shielding Trump from any potential danger. Trump had just returned to Florida from a West Coast swing, which included a Friday rally in Las Vegas and a Utah fundraiser. His security has noticeably ramped up since the first assassination attempt back in July. Now he speaks behind bulletproof glass at outdoor rallies and even has dump trucks forming a barrier outside Trump Tower in New York. If comrade Kamala wins this November, World War III is virtually guaranteed to happen. The stakes, it seems, have never been higher. Trump's golf game in Florida came with some serious security measures, though it wasn't quite the fortress it would have been if he were still president. The golf course was partially shut down for Trump, but there are plenty of spots around the perimeter where golfers can be seen from the fence line. Secret Service agents were stationed ahead and behind him, some cruising around on golf carts and ATVs. They even had an armored vehicle on standby, ready to whisk him away if things got dicey. Palm Beach County Sheriff Rick Bradshaw explained that if Trump were still president, the entire golf course would have been swarmed with law enforcement. But since he's not, 
Security was only set up in the spots the Secret Service thought necessary. Next time he's out there, I imagine there'll be a few more people guarding the perimeter, Bradshaw said, adding, but the Secret Service did exactly what they were supposed to. Trump took to social media late Sunday to thank the Secret Service and law enforcement for keeping him safe, calling them brave and dedicated patriots, and adding that it had been certainly an interesting day. He was scheduled to get a personal briefing on Monday from Acting Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe about the investigation into the assassination attempt, according to a source familiar with the situation. While former presidents and their spouses get lifelong Secret Service protection, the level of security varies based on the threat. Given Trump's high visibility and the fact that he's running for office again, his detail has been much tighter than that of some other ex-presidents. The man arrested in connection with the incident is Ryan Routh. A 58-year-old North Carolina native who now lives in Honolulu, Hawaii, where he builds sheds. Law enforcement officials confirmed Routh's identity and photos from the scene show the AK-47 rifle he allegedly used, propped up against a fence next to a black backpack and a GoPro camera. Another image shows Routh's arrest on I-95 with his black vehicle boxed in by two police cars. Routh's online presence is unique. He frequently commented on political and pop culture posts on X, advocating for causes as varied as ending the war in Ukraine. I've been dealing with Russia for my entire life, you know? We had one period where it was okay, but now we've let it slip, slip back into, into terror, terror. To saving a staircase in Oahu, Hawaii, his ex-bio reads, I feel lucky to have been born in America with freedom and opportunity and hope I don't waste such a valuable thing to do more and take less. This account and other social media were suspiciously deleted not long after the FBI honed in on him. Why could this be? He even has a website for his supposed mayoral run in Honolulu, which features longer versions of his ex-posts. His site dives deep into his opinions on global affairs and his call for the separation of church and state. Quite the character, to say the least. Back in 2020, Ryan Ruth was all in for Trump's re-election on social media, but in recent years his online support shifted to Biden and Harris. Now, the FBI is leading the investigation into the attempted assassination on Trump and digging into Ruth's possible motives. Attorney General Merrick Garland Garland is being kept in the loop with regular updates, and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives is pitching in too. The FBI has responded to West Palm Beach, Florida, and is investigating what appears to be an attempted assassination of former President Trump, the Bureau announced. Meanwhile, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis wasn't sitting idle. He announced that Florida would be conducting its own investigation, demanding answers on how someone got within 500 yards of the former president and current GOP nominee. Previously, security experts had pointed out how the Secret Service had been either incredibly incompetent or in on something bigger. I'll be honest with you, there is something a little bit fishy about this situation. It's the Secret Service that will be attached to, to President Trump should have got all of the um, highest positions, the overviews that there would be of the event space. Interestingly, Trump's campaign didn't have any reporters with him on Sunday, a move that breaks from the typical protocol for major party candidates. While Vice President Harris doesn't always have a press pool, she does allow reporters to tag along for public events. But Trump's campaign, not so much. Martin County Sheriff Snyder explained that Routh was captured within minutes after an urgent bolo. Be on the lookout alert went out from the FBI, Secret Service, and Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. His deputies flooded the northbound I-95 and quickly boxed in Routh's vehicle, bringing him into custody. Ruth's criminal history stretches back to at least 2002, when he was convicted in Guilford County, North Carolina, for possessing a weapon of mass destruction. At the time, the Greensboro News & Record reported that Routh had fled from a traffic stop, holed up inside a local business, and kicked off a three-hour standoff. The kicker? He was armed with a fully automatic machine gun. Routh owned the business where the standoff happened, United Roofing, and according to public records, his name was all over it. His LinkedIn profile shows he relocated to Hawaii in 2018. In 2010, Ruth got into more trouble, this time for possession of stolen goods. He was sentenced to probation, but details on those charges are still fuzzy. Tina Cooper, a former employee of Routh's at United Roofing, recalled the 2002 standoff saying her boss had a reputation for doing stupid S. Cooper said, he had a standoff here, and I don't know what he was thinking then either. She added that Routh did some stupid S down here and got away with some of it. 
During the 2002 standoff, Routh, who didn't have a valid driver's license at the time, was pulled over by Greensboro police. He took off, leading them to his United Roofing office, where he barricaded himself inside with that machine gun. After three tense hours, Routh surrendered and was slapped with charges ranging from possession of a weapon of mass destruction to resisting arrest. One of the officers from that day, Tracy Folk, reflected on the incident in an interview with Wired, saying, I figured he was either dead or in prison by now. I had no clue that he had moved on and was continuing his escapades. Routh's life seems to be a series of strange turns, some you just couldn't make up. Ryan Routh's son Oren was floored when he found out his dad was the prime suspect in the attempted assassination of Trump. My dad hates Trump, like any reasonable person does, Oren told the Daily Mail, adding, I don't like Trump either. But even with their shared feelings about the former president, Oren couldn't believe his father would be involved in something like this. I've never known my dad to own a gun or do anything be like this, Oren said, clearly stunned. That's crazy. I know my dad, and I love my dad, but this is not him. He's not a violent person. Oran described his father as a hard worker and a great dad who's worked his whole F life. The father and son aren't currently in touch, and Oran admitted he had no idea his dad was even in Florida. In a statement to CNN, Oran gave more insight into his father's character. Ryan is my father, and I don't have any comment beyond a character profile of him as a loving and caring father, and an honest, hard-working man. I hope this is all blown out of proportion because this doesn't sound like the man I know. Ruth's story gets even more layered when you dig into his past. He reportedly went to Ukraine after the Russian invasion, trying to recruit Afghan soldiers fleeing the Taliban to fight against Russia. Last year, in a call with the Times, he mentioned that a diplomat believed his efforts to help Ukraine could actually work. But when a US fighter spoke down to him in a message, Routh reportedly said the fighter needs to be shot. In Washington last year, Routh was meeting with the US Commission on Security and Cooperation in Europe to push for more support for Ukraine. He claimed he was recruiting Afghan soldiers who had escaped the Taliban hoping to move them from Pakistan and Iran to Ukraine. According to him, dozens had expressed interest. Ruth wasn't shy about his strategy, telling the Times that he believed they could probably purchase some passports through Pakistan since it's such a corrupt country. In March last year, Routh also spoke to Semaphore, venting about his frustrations with the Ukrainian government. He said Ukraine was tough to work with, often making it difficult for foreign soldiers without proper credentials to join the fight. Many foreign soldiers leave after a week or have to hop from unit to unit to find a place where they're respected, he explained, adding, Ukraine's afraid everyone's a Russian spy. At the time, Routh was in D.C., hoping to convince U.S. leadership to pressure Ukraine into accepting these soldiers. It all hinges on our U.S. partners encouraging Ukraine to use these men or us convincing them to do so, he said. Just two weeks ago, Donald Trump put forward the theory that the recent attempt on his life could have been an inside job. You do have to wonder, he said, giving a nod to the unfounded speculation. Monica Crowley, a former Fox News personality and Trump administration official, didn't shy away from adding fuel to the fire. She accused officials of slow walking the investigation and asked Trump point blank, does this look like a suspicious, maybe even inside job? Trump, of course, ran with it. Without any evidence, Trump also hinted that Democrats might be footing the legal bills for the father of the deceased gunman, Thomas Crooks. This came after the FBI had no trouble unlocking Crooks' phone following the July 13th assassination attempt. However, Trump claimed they couldn't access certain apps, calling that detail suspicious. This only deepened speculation among conservatives about Crook's contacts before the incident. Trump also revisited FBI Director Christopher Wray's initial statement about whether Trump had been hit by shrapnel or a bullet, suggesting that uncertainty might mean something suspicious was going on. The FBI later confirmed it was, indeed, a bullet. There's so much happening here that you just have to wonder, Trump said. I wasn't thinking this way three weeks ago, but the more you see, the more you start to believe there might be something else, and that's really dangerous for the country. There were many on the internet that felt there was more to the attempts on his life than the government is letting slip. One person said, makes it possible that Routh has ties to Russian agents. Whilst this person had this to say, American here, this whole thing smells of Russia. A pro-Ukrainian American attempts to take Trump's life? How convenient. 
Russia will not win this war unless Trump gets re-elected and turns off US aid, which he would do on his first day. This is an attempt to salvage Trump's failing chances after his disastrous debate performance. Trump is a Russian asset. He even drew comparisons to the assassination of JFK, a topic that's been steeped in conspiracy theories for decades. Trump said if he wins the election, he'll launch an investigation during his first week back in office, noting, it's harder to get the facts as time goes by. Crowley kept the conspiracy vibes going, blaming the imperial media and regime for burying the story, which she said lends credence to this idea that it could have been an inside job. They don't want to talk about it, Trump replied, just like they didn't want to talk about the 2020 election. For context, Crooks was shot and killed after firing at Trump during a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, grazing Trump's ear. The FBI hasn't identified a clear motive and described the rally as a target of opportunity for the shooter, which is certainly very suspect. What do you think is the truth behind the second assassination attempt? Let us know in the comments.